This week, the president announced the withdrawal of American troops from Syria, about 2,000 of them. The move shocked and horrified pretty much everybody in permanent Washington. The city seemed stunned by the news. It's hard to see why, though. American forces went to Syria to contain the Islamic State. They succeeded, thankfully. Trump is bringing them home, just as he pledged to. Naturally, the neocons were apoplectic. I am shocked by this. I think this is a decision that is against sound military advice. What you have done, in my view, is set us back. We're not the policemen of the world. I understand that. But we are the glue that holds this world together. So this decision is a disaster on multiple fronts, and I hope it can be changed. So unless Americans continue to finance and die in pointless Middle Eastern conflicts, the world will collapse. That's the core tenet of neoconservative theology, no surprise there, at least they're consistent. What's amazing is how Democrats responded. The peace party has become the party of permanent war. Pulling American forces out of a distant country after they've completed their mission, that's criminal negligence, they're telling us. Well, there's so many foolish things this man has done, but this ranks pretty high. A decision that is dangerous, and a decision that is a Christmas present to Vladimir Putin. Giving a huge Christmas present to Putin and to Iran. I couldn't disagree more with this decision. It's a terrible decision. I think this will be considered one of the worst foreign policy blunders of this century. So they're very upset. But nobody bothered to explain why it's so awful that we won't have thousands of Americans stationed in the worst country in the world. They didn't need to explain, really, because everyone in Washington is on the same page on this question. They all agree that conflict is better than peace, always and everywhere, but especially in places where it can't possibly help the United States. Troops in Syria, good. Troops on the U.S. border, bad. The lie they tell themselves is that we're in control of the world, that it's even possible to control the world. A few troops here, a bombing campaign there, and we can decide the course of global events. But of course we can't. The outcome of any conflict can never be known. Unintended consequences are the rule. But our rulers can't admit that because they'd have to admit they're not God. If you're wondering why our ruling class pushes for war as fanatically as it does for abortion, that's why. Killing gives them the illusion of control and makes them feel powerful. Here, for example, was the reaction two years ago when the administration lobbed cruise missiles into Syria for no comprehensible reason. The media loved it. Look at how pretty the bombs are. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Um, and they are beautiful pictures of, uh, of fearsome armaments making what is for them a brief flight over to this airfield. What did they hit? Oh, it's beautiful, those high explosives wrapped in steel. There's just something about a thousand pound armor piercing warhead that's balm for the soul, like a sunrise or first love. You don't need to be Sigmund Freud to catch the creepy erotic undertones here. It's war porn. Little boys love it, so do news anchors and TV strategists. But what about the rest of us? Do we get a say in any of this? Is there a large group of Americans clamoring for more fruitless wars in the Middle East? Probably not. On the other hand, they don't care what you think. You assume this was democracy? You thought we had civilian control of the military? What are you, a Russian agent? Unelected generals and think tank staffers make those decisions, and any president who stands in their way must be removed. We're not overstating this. They're actually saying that out loud in Washington today. Rescuing Americans from somebody else's civil war is now grounds for impeachment, if not a military coup. In fact, it's treason. President Trump kowtowing to Vladimir Putin. It could not get better for Putin today. Now he's, he's turned Syria over to the Russians. To the Russians? To the Russians. To the Iranians right. and ISIS. This is a Christmas gift to America's enemies. This will help ISIS. This will help Russia. This will help Iran. At the very uh, worst moment, we have given up our leverage and basically handed it to Russia. I don't know what he's getting Melania for Christmas, but I know what he gave Vladimir Putin for Christmas. Lifting sanctions on that oh Russian gosh. company and leaving Syria. That is a gift to Vladimir Putin. 
it's, it's really hard to know how to respond to all of that. Obviously, it's terrifying that people this stupid have influence over our country. It's the policy equivalent of drunk driving. Take the wheel from them before they crash. Oops, they already have crashed. But keep in mind that just weeks ago, these very same morons were calling Trump a puppet of Saudi Arabia. But wait, Saudi Arabia wants the U.S. to stay in Syria. Does that make sense? No. And so after a while, you start to suspect that Trump's real crime isn't being a puppet of the Saudis or Putin. It's refusing to be a puppet of permanent Washington. That's what they really hate. Douglas McGregor has been around all of this for a very long time. He's a retired U.S. Army colonel. He's the author of the book Margin of Victory, and he joins us tonight. So, Colonel, I, I consider you a, a, a trustworthy um, source of information on these questions. Do you think it's an impeachable offense to withdraw our troops from Syria? Well, of course not. That's ridiculous nonsense. Look, you've just done a great job of explaining why President Trump's decision was really a brilliant decision. First of all, President Trump, for the first time, made a decision to withdraw forces without consulting his inner circle. By the way, this is the same inner circle that has sabotaged every policy action that, that President Trump has tried to initiate, has obstructed the American First agenda from day one. So thank goodness he's not talking to them. Secondly, he's struck a blow for the American people against the warfare state. What you just showed on television is what we like to refer to as the Washington Uniparty. These are the people on your famous ship that's sinking right now. These are the individuals, lobbyists, uh, legislators, uh, retired senior officers, media. These are the individuals that want to cultivate conflict and keep forces mired everywhere. But as you say, leave our southern border, our borders, our territorial waters effectively open. So Donald Trump has done a great service because he's brought all of this out into the open. And he needs to remember something. When Richard Nixon did something similar and ended the Vietnam War and pulled our troops out under the best circumstances that he could get, he was not only reelected, when he went to his inauguration, he had a 68% approval rating. That's where yeah. Donald Trump is headed with the American people. Forget the people in Washington and the people that you just showed on the television. Two quick questions. Is I noticed in all the coverage in the last two days, no one has made an explicit case for what the point of staying in Syria would be. I mean, they make these sort of broad claims, we can't help Putin or the Iranians, but no one ever gets up and says, okay, we're gonna be there for six years, we're gonna achieve these three things. Is there, is there a case for it? Uh, no, absolutely not. In fact, the good news is that the Russians, the Iranians, the Syrian government will do a very fine job of absolutely annihilating what remains of ISIS. The other point is that we were in a position in northern Syria where we were extremely vulnerable. Remember, we always had light troops there. They were always under threat yeah. of attack. We were waiting for another Beirut bombing to occur between the Turks, the Iranians, the Kurds, and so forth. And by the way, the Israelis, if they want to go in there and attack anything that they think is a, is a danger to their security, they can do so. They're free to do so. Of we're out of the way. Them. 